Hey guys, welcome to yet another video for Python's error handling. So this video is a third video for error handling. And in this video, we'll be talking about cascading exceptions by manually raising exceptions within the parent except block. And we'll also try to implement exception handling in the unit conversion program from previous videos. So let's get into this. So in our last video, we talked about how to handle exceptions using try and accept block. And I have the code here from the last video. So just to recap real quick, when I run this function as is, uh, since there will be no exception in the try block, you will see a total of three print statements coming from this function. So first one from the try block, and second one coming from the else block, and then the last print statement will come from the finally block. So the code in the else block only gets triggered when there is no error in the try block. And the code in the finally block always gets triggered regardless of whether you had an exception in the try block or not. So then now, let's try to create an error in the try block so instead of an index of zero, if I put index of three here to create an index error, and if I run this once again, then this time you will see the index error list index error range being printed out from this except block, and also you will see a print statement coming from the finally block. So that was a quick recap of what we talked about in the previous video. So then now let's try to talk about the cascading exceptions. So the cascading exceptions, as the name says it, we are cascading multiple exceptions one after another. So we have an index error here. And in this except block, let's say that you have some code to handle this index error. But that code has a potential to generate another exception, for example, like type error. So I'm going to manually raise a type error within this first except block here. So what I can do here is that I can just type raise type error. And then let me just comment this print statement. And if I run this as is once again, then you will see a type error, even though we are handling index error within this except block. So now we have to handle this second exception, which is a type error within the first except block. So to do this, we just need to create another set of try and except block within the first except block here. And in the try, I can actually put the raise type error. And in the except, I'm gonna actually handle the type error. So I can do except type error as e and I can print the representation of this type error error object and in the right below the index error let me also print the error object here so that we can actually see two errors being cascaded one another so if I run this once again you will see that the first print message will say the index error because we are actually handling the index error in this except block and while you are handling the index error in this try we actually raised another error, which is a type error. And this type error was handled by this nested except block with a type error as E. And then we are actually printing out the representation of the type error. So that's why you are seeing the type error print statement right below word. And depending on your situation, you can place this nested try and except block multiple times if necessary. So using this nested try and except block, we can easily cascade one exception to another and this will be especially useful when you want to catch a custom exception to suit your need. And since creating a custom exception requires us to have a better knowledge about the Python class, we'll try to talk about that once we get to the class video. Okay, so then now, let's try to have some examples of handling exceptions in a bit more practical example. So for that, I'm going to reutilize the unit conversion program that we've implemented a few videos back. So if you need to refer back to it, please click the link from the top right corner. And you can also find the code in the GitHub link in the video description. So for those of you who haven't watched this unit conversion video, this is a simple program that allows you to convert a value from one unit to another. And it utilizes a simple cross multiplication to do so. So when I look at this program, I see four places where exceptions can happen. So let's take a look at them one by one. So the first exception can be raised by when I run this program and see the menu. And then we are supposed to pick either one or two, the energy value. But if I put ABCD instead, let's see what happens. So if I type uh, enter, then you will see a value error being raised in the console. And this is because we are actually getting the string input from here but we are wrapping this input into the integer and so that ABCD cannot be converted into the integer value properly and that's why it's throwing a value error. Okay, so then let's go into the second exception. So in the menu, so let me try to run this once again. We are supposed to get the integer value as you see here. So if I put a integer value here, but not one or two, let's see what happens. So if I put 99 here, then this time you will see an attribute error being raised and as we learned in the first video for the error handling, 
that attribute error will be thrown when you try to access an attribute that does not exist. So in this case, we are trying to access an attribute called get method from this non object right here. If user input dot get menu, but the user input is none because in the get user input function, which is here, we are only handling when the menu is one and menu is two. So when menu is 99, we are not returning anything. And that's why this user input is none. And in this line 47 here, you are trying to call the get method in a non object, which does not exist. And that's why you are seeing the attribute error here. Okay, then let's move on to the third exception here. So this exception is identical to the first exception, where if the program prompts us to enter the number, if I put non integer characters, then it will throw a value error again. So in the menu, this time I'm going to put a correct value, which is one here. And then whenever we are prompted to enter a number here, this takes an integer value as well. So in here, if I put a string like ABCD once again here and type enter, then you will see a value error being raised once again. So the first value error was coming from the menu. And then the second value error is coming from the number because we are wrapping this string input into the float. Okay, so the last exception that can happen in this program is called keyboard interrupt. And this exception is one of the exceptions in base class where you cannot handle this using the generic exception class as we learned in the last video. And I can easily create this error by manually stopping this program by either pressing Ctrl C or clicking the red button, the red square button here. So let me first run this. And now the program is running. And if I try to manually stop this program by clicking this red button here, then you will see a keyboard interrupt, basically saying that the program that was running was interrupted by the keyboard. Okay, so we've looked at total of four places where exceptions can happen. Let's try to apply what we've learned in our last video to handle these exceptions. So I'm going to start with a value error from the menu. So this value error is being raised when I enter non-integer characters. So then before we actually write our try and accept block, we need to decide how this program should behave when the error was handled in the accept block. So there are many options that you can take. You can have a print statement in the accept block and letting the user know that there was an error or if you are developing a web application, you can create a JSON response to the user interface with some message, or we can even try to rerun this get user input function so that users can see the menu again when there is an error. So for the purpose of this video, let's try to print a message out so that users are aware that this menu only takes integer and also let's try to rerun this program so that users can see the menu automatically again. So the first step that I'm going to do here in this menu is that I'm going to create a try block. So try and then put the menu inside. And then I'm going to have an except block here. And then the exception that we are handling is a value error. So value error as E. And then in here, instead of printing out the value error representation, I'm going to actually have a, a pretty print statement saying menu only takes integer. And then in below, I want to recall this get user input so that users are prompted with the new menu once again. So all I want to do here is to return this function once again. And so if I run this and if I type ABCD in the menu, then this time you will see a print message saying that menu only takes integer and then users are prompted to the menu once again so that they can select the options again. Okay, so then now let's move on to our second exception. So the second exception, which is an attribute error, can be raised when we put integer characters other than one or two in the menu. And in the line, let's see, line 51, when you try to call the get method on the non object, meaning user input is none, it is throwing the attribute error because none doesn't have an attribute called get. So in order for us to actually handle this exception, uh, we can actually put the try block uh, above the 51 and put this code block inside that. So what I can do here is that put try here and then uh, tap the uh, if statement below the try. And at the same line as try, I'm going to have accept. And then in this time, I'm going to, I'm catching the attribute error. So attribute error at E. And in here, uh, we can also have a print statement here saying that the menu only takes one or two. And then in below, I want to do the same thing, but this time I want to call this function so that users are prompted with the get user input function, meaning the user prompt once again. 
So I can just copy this and return this function. So let me just quit this program. And if I try to run this once again, and this time I want to put 99 as the menu. So 99 and enter. Then you will see a print message saying that the menu only takes one or two. And then it re-prompted the user menu once again so that users can select different options. An alternative to this method of using try and accept, if you don't want to handle the exception but rather want to handle the non-object, meaning the user input variable, then we can simply remove this try and accept block and just have a simple uh, if statement right here. So let me show you the method. So let me first comment this. And right below the user input, I'm going to write an if statement saying if not user input. So basically saying if the user input is none, then I want to print the same message out. So let me just copy this. The menu only takes one or two. And then let me also copy this return statement because we want the same behavior. And let's not also forget to put this uh, break statement back in. Okay, and then put inside the break. So let me try to run this once again and see what happens. So if I run this, and then in the menu, if I type 99 and type enter, then you will see a print message coming out from this uh, if statement. And you will be re-prompted with a fresh menu once again because we are rerunning the convert unit function. So from here, if I type um, option of two, meaning quit, then it will actually finish the program because this if statement, now the user input is not none because I selected the option of two here. Okay, so the second exception, which is the attribute error is handled. Let's go to the third exception. And this one is a value error coming from the number variable. So it's right here, the number. So it's basically complaining that if the non numeric characters are entered in number variable, it throws that error because this one takes a float. And we've already handled the value error right here for the menu. So what we can do here is that we can reutilize this except by putting the entire code below into the try block. So let me show you that here. I can just cut this and then put the rest of the code inside the try. And what this will do is that if the value error is caused from the menu, it will go to except block. If the value error is caused from the number, it will still go to the except block because we have all the code in the try block right now. So what I can do here is that instead of only saying menu, I can say menu or number only takes integer because there are two sources that can cause the value error. The first one is the number and then the second one is the menu. So let me try to run this once again. And this time I'm gonna select one. And whenever I'm prompted with a number, I'm gonna say uh, A, B, C, D. And you will see the print message saying that menu or number only takes integer so that users are aware that for the menu and number, I have to put the integer or flow value. And then they are re-prompted with the menu once again because this value error except calls the get user input once again. Okay, so finally, the last exception that we're gonna handle is the keyboard interrupt. And this error is very easy to handle. And this error is caused when you actually try to manually quit the program while the program is running. So that our target function is the convert unit because the convert unit is the function that we actually invoke at the very bottom. So what we can do there is that we can actually put the try and accept block and put every content in this convert unit function into the try block and then try to handle the keyboard interrupt exception. So for that in here, I'm gonna write a try and then put every content uh, below the try. And then at the same line as try, I'm gonna have an accept. And then this time I wanna handle the keyboard interrupt exception. Interrupt as E. And then for this, I wanna simply print a print message out saying that with a line break, someone quit the program manually. So if I run this once again, and then this time if I click this uh, red square button to manually quit this running program, let's see what happens. So once I click it, then you will see a someone quit the program manually message coming out instead of seeing the keyboard interrupt being raised in the console. Okay guys, that's it for this video. We are almost done with the Python error handling. So in our next video, we'll be talking about debugging using the tools provided by PyCharm. And then the methods for debugging is very similar in many other IDEs as well as the debugging tools. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe and like my videos. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you in the next videos.